Welcome to hole number one of the Spring Major here on the Sierra Plateau course. I like playing on the left-hand side here from the front tee. Seems to give me a very nice second shot. I set it up with the extra mile and a navigator using three bars of topspin, one bar of left spin. And in this wind, I probably could have gone the full four bars of topspin. But you know how it is. You kind of have to tweak it, adjust it, and get things just right for those tournament live wind conditions. I end up giving this like a circle break OP, which is why I say I could have gone with four, four and a half top and then a little bit less over power. But at the end of the day, we're trying to get this one nicely down the fairway here. And you see how there's a bit more room for a bit more top spin. You could go a touch of left curl here. Uh, but as you can see, there's a big elevation drop here down to the green, which is a common theme you'll find on this course. Lots of big elevations to play with. So we're close to max here, but because we are at max, we have to bring it back so that we have room to adjust. You can count rings from max if that's something you're familiar with. And I'm adjusting here in the video 35% and I'm using about 80% there on my slider because we're, you know, close to the max distance, but not quite. So I played it at 35, you're gonna see that I needed just a little bit more. So I am recommending here in the video, 40% mid or about 40% slider, depending on your understanding of those subjects. And we can always talk more about that and we can work together, but you can see this one comes in oh so close and gonna give us a very nice way to start with an eagle. Hole number two, this part of three, I'm setting up here with a Navigator and a Goliath. And you can see this rough bump is so juicy. It is such a consistent landing position that once you find the elevation, um, it's, it's really quite makeable. And in fact, you don't even need to use any spin here. I'm playing this with no spin in a direct headwind. You might need to use a little bit of topspin. And in a direct tailwind, you might need a little bit of backspin. But all in all, this is about as straightforward of a shot as you get 10% mid on the pull make sure you hit perfect and this one is going to give us like must make drops for most of the tournament when it's going to look like this so come on we'll see you on number three hole number three I think presents us with a pretty fair chance for albatross I like setting up on the left hand side here I bring a power three ball my extra mile you see I'm looking to get down to that fairway there is a play there you got big clubs and big balls four and a half top one bar of left spin and you'll see i probably should have played like three and a half bars of top spin here especially if you have a tailwind you might only need two bars um just have to adjust according to the tournament conditions this video is a general guide i'm showing you the pathway the clubs the balls the techniques trying to talk about options and different variables but i cannot play your tournament round for you hit perfect here 10 percent max on the adjustment and you'll see how this one comes in a little bit close to the edge Ooh, but if you can get down with a good distance here, it'll leave you with a short iron. If you're a little bit further back, you will have to play this shot with a long iron, um, which isn't a problem, but just to be aware. I pull it back a little bit because we are close to max there, and I give this one one back, and I think I end up giving it just a one left, but I think two left is nice as well because it keeps you a little bit further from the bunker. So it just depends on the angle of your actual shot. You could bounce over this bunker as well, you know, and play that from about mid distance. You know, there's so many ways. It's a brand new course. I don't claim to have all the answers, but I did find that it was a lot of fun playing through this round. And I do think there's going to be a ton of options to get drops here. We're going to get some really low scores. So be ready for it. Take some time to practice. Watch the video a couple times all the way through. And as you can see, we're going to get this one really, really close. All right, so hole four, if you've got any kind of a tailwind angle here, and this one, you know, it's kind of in between, but you can see you can bounce it over from this little pad. I'm giving it, you know, about 1.5 to 1.8, maybe two bars of topspin, depending, um, and just bouncing straight at it. I adjust this shot at 30% mid, which is kind of my working theory. And of course, having a better ball guide here is always better. This is still a Goliath six, and I'm kind of guesstimating a little bit. If you've got a good Grizzly or, you know, a long iron you prefer with better ball guide, please go ahead and use it, okay? I'm not saying this is the final answer. This is just a general pathway of how you can play this one um, with a little bit of tailwind. Excuse me if I didn't say that. Um, but as you can see, comes up just a hair short, but right on line, big elevations with big opportunities. 
All right, quickly, once again, we've got hole four, but this time with a headwind. And you'll see I'm playing this sniper at absolute minimum distance. And I think that's a good place to be. Gives us a really easier time to dial it in. 5.5 bars of backspin. So any wood club that can reach this distance with 5.5 back. I like how we've got a nice uh, ball guide there. Now, I played this shot at 40%. You can see there on the app, 40% min. And I do believe we will slightly over adjust this. And this is why I'm suggesting 35 min as sort of the working target to start with. We do have to push the adjustment here. Lots of beautiful trees and foliage on this course. I think it's really beautiful. I think the Sierra Plateau is a great course, a really good addition to the game. And I really, really enjoyed playing through here. And I'm looking forward to playing with you in expert live. So a bit over adjusted, maybe even 30% min, but we're gonna get there very, very close. Hole five, this one is an interesting hole. You can definitely play left, right, but I kind of enjoy the center shot here. At max with the white ring on the right rough, and I'm giving this four top, three bars of right spin, and I'm gonna make a one to one adjustment. So 3.4 wind, I'm gonna pull 3.4 rings. And as you can see, we're just gonna give this half a ball of right curl. You could use more, but I think this comes in perfectly given the conditions here. And as you can see, we just jump over that corner, rolling up the fairway here and it gives us a perfect straight look to the pin you could play a rough bump on the second shot right beside it there but i elect to go with a bounce shot with the thorn we're very very close to min with the headwind i think this is a perfect situation so it all depends on what your preference is and the way you like to do it i played a little ring from min shot there and i end up giving this just like uh i have top spin there i thought i ended up playing it with a bit of backspin can't quite recall. Yeah, we gave a little bit of topspin. About a half a bar or so. Three quarters, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 topspin there with this lower level thorn. A few different ways you can set up the shot. But at the end of the day, leaving yourself a short iron into the pin here on a par four does give you a high chance of getting an eagle. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so hole number six. This par five is actually one of my least favorite holes so far. I set up here in a bit of a headwind. Four and a half top, one bar of left spin. And, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of an interesting one here with the fairway so broken up. I just give it a clean 10% max adjustment here. Nothing much here with the 2.2 wind. And as you can see, I'm just going to hit this one normally. No curl, no overpower. And the idea here is you're going to get this little bounce just before that bit of rough. Second bounce at the beginning of this long second fairway and trying to get somewhere near the end of it. There is the other fairway past that but from here i tend to play very nicely into a skinny little rough bump you can certainly play some backspin here um, but i think that this rough bump is the way that most players are going to play it i give it about 1.5 bars of top spin well if i played it with one i'm suggesting 1.5 in my note presuming we're going to come up a little bit short in the headwind top of that green ring touching the top of the rough and i play this one you know 15%, 10% in that range, depending on the wind. I played this hole a lot of times in practice. And I just, I think that because of this rough being so flat that everybody is going to go for it. So clean hit here, 15 in the shot, but I think 10 max is the number I had the most consistency with. And right in the middle, comes up a hair short. So about one and a half top there in a headwind, but this is going to be the way to play it. Hole number seven, I elect to play this with a no move shot. So I'm not adjusting from the landing position we start with at all with this Goliath and the Navigator. I apply about 3.8 bars of backspin here and we're adjusting this shot at 30% mid elevation. It's a beautiful hole. I think this is like the signature hole for the course. You know, you've got the danger of the water. You've got the beautiful steps coming down. It's, uh, I think this is very well designed. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Notice how the waterfall stops while you're taking your shot just to kind of make it easier to concentrate, but the mist keeps going. I don't know. I think it's a good thought. Comes in nicely, beautiful speed. You can see this is very, very droppable with minor, minor tweaks. This is gonna be a good chance for a hole in one. Hole number eight, this part four, spend some time getting comfortable with this drive. It is more treacherous than it appears. Four and a half top, one bar of left spin. And you'll notice that I'm using the Zerk here. This is a short par four, and we need to get as close to the green as possible to give us the best chance for the drop. 
depending on the distance, you're either going to be in an end bringer, you know, wedge range, or you could be in a short iron range. But I really think if you're going to spend a single Zerk on this course, this is probably the hole to do it. Now, I don't actually use any overpower here. If you go to the right, this this uh, fairway slopes way down and you'll end up in the rough. If you go to the left, that water is absolutely in play. Ask me how I know. But if you can get up here, see a little bit of curl, but not too much. Could go in the water. This puts us in a pretty good range. We are actually at max wedge range here or very, very close to it. And because of the way that wind is playing, I just play this one directly at 20% max with no spin. It sets up so, so nice. Sometimes these max distance wedge shots, you have to play it at 25, but you'll see the outcome here and you can be the judge of how you want to play it. I always like when I can land on a fringe, um, but this course, it's actually really nice. It's consistent landing positions. Sure, there's some decent elevations, which gives us, you know, something to work with, but it's actually like not rolling hills and inconsistent bounces that we've seen in the last couple of tournaments. So we can actually get some drops. Let's go. Okay, so hole number nine, I'm playing with the Titan, but recommending a Kingmaker just because it's a, it's a good, good little bit of wind here. However, we're trying to get down to that third piece of fairway, and however you need to do it, you could use a Zerg here as well. I elect to take my Titan, give it the max topspin here, and give it max overpower. The Kingmaker would be a little bit easier, but as you can see, with a minor grate, we're still getting down there, no problem at all. Somewhere in the middle of this pad, kind of near the end of this shadow, Puts us in a good distance for a sniper rough bump here. Again, if you want to play a backspin shot or what makes you feel better, you go right ahead. Three top, one left here. And this one sets up very, very nicely. And I like the way the wind angle here does not have me pulling down into the bunker. Many of you know by now, I don't like pulling into bunkers if I don't have to. Because it can really alter the outcome of the shot and create additional layers of complexity that are certainly not my favorite. My favorite is playing Golf Clash with you, hanging out in the streams and making videos. Check the website, ehrlichgaming.com. I have free notes based on this video for you to work with. And I'm looking forward to playing the Spring Major with you. Good luck, and thank you so much for watching.